Carl Sagan once said that Earth is nothing more than a pale blue dot, a fragile speck suspended in a sunbeam. Seen from billions of miles away, it is smaller than a pixel, barely visible against the blackness of space. From that distance, all our borders disappear. All our wars, our pride, our pain, everything humanity has ever done, exists on that single shimmering point. Every king and peasant, every saint and sinner, every invention, every prayer, every act of love or hate, every human story, all of it, contained in one grain of light. And that is where we begin, by asking, where is Earth in the universe? For most of history, we believed we were at the center of everything. The sun rose and fell for us, the stars moved around us, we built our myths, our gods, and our empires on the idea that this small planet was the main stage of creation. The universe, we thought, was a grand play written for our eyes alone. But then curiosity rebelled against certainty. We built lenses to magnify the heavens, and with every new discovery, we moved farther from the center. First, we learned that Earth orbits the Sun. Then that the Sun is just one of billions of stars in the Milky Way. Then we found that the Milky Way itself is just one galaxy among trillions. Every time we looked deeper, the stage grew larger, and our supposed importance smaller. Yet, paradoxically, as the universe expanded around us, something immense awakened within us. Awareness. So where, then, is Earth? Imagine rising upward, leaving behind everything familiar. You ascend past the cities, the forests, the oceans, until the whole planet hangs beneath you. A blue sphere wrapped in clouds and light. From this height, there are no countries, no walls, only the thin glow of atmosphere holding in all that is alive. You drift farther still, the moon circles quietly around, our companion in an ancient dance. The sun burns in the distance, keeping eight planets in its gravitational spell. Earth becomes one among many, orbiting in delicate balance, a single note in the solar symphony. Keep going. From beyond the edges of the solar system, even the sun becomes just another bright dot in a sea of stars. And then you see the Milky Way, our galaxy, spiraling in majestic silence, containing about 400 billion suns. Our solar system lies not near the center, but on the outskirts, in a region known as the Orion Arm, a small neighborhood in a vast cosmic city. But don't stop there. Zoom out still further, until the Milky Way itself becomes one among two trillion galaxies in the observable universe, each containing billions of stars and perhaps countless worlds like ours. And beyond that horizon, there may be more, regions so far away that their light has not yet reached us. The universe doesn't end where our sight does, it continues, endlessly, silently. Now pause and look back. That's home, that small dot, that fragile spark of color, that's where every heartbeat has ever existed. Every poem, every war, every song, every child, every love story, it all lives there, together, unseen from here. That dot is us. It's humbling, isn't it? To know that everything we are exists in what seems so small, but there's a strange beauty in that smallness. Because from this cosmic distance, we learn something extraordinary. We are not insignificant. We are rare. For in this vast and ancient universe, matter has come alive. It has begun to see itself, to ask questions, to wonder. You, standing here, thinking about your place in the cosmos, you are the universe becoming aware of its own existence. We are stardust learning to understand the stars. So, perhaps the question, where is Earth, is not really about coordinates in space. It's about perspective. It's about understanding that our position, on the edge of a galaxy, on a tiny world, is both ordinary and miraculous. Ordinary, because there are countless worlds out there. Miraculous, because this one can think, feel, and dream. And maybe that's the point. Our greatness was never in being the center of the universe, it's in being able to comprehend that we're not. Humility is not a loss of importance, it's a gain of truth. The vastness that once made us feel small now gives us context, meaning, and reverence. When you look up at the night sky and feel small, remember this. You are made of the same atoms as those stars. The iron in your blood, the calcium in your bones, the oxygen you breathe, they were all forged in the hearts of ancient suns. The universe is not out there somewhere. It's inside you. So where is Earth in the universe? It's in a quiet corner of the Milky Way, orbiting an ordinary star. But more profoundly, it's wherever life dares to ask this question. Because in asking it, the universe begins to know itself. Perhaps our place is not measured in distance, but in awareness. And perhaps that is what makes this small blue world more than just a planet, it makes it a miracle.